So when it comes to home brewing, the cooler mash tun is probably the most common um, addition for a home brewer when they move from either extract brewing or out of sort of steeping brewing a bag into all green brewing. Very often they get themselves a, a mash tun. And unless you want to spend the money on kettles that you know and, and rims and herm systems the easiest way is to get a cooler and convert it to a mash tun by throwing a valve on it and throwing a bazooka tube or something on the inside. That's great for sitting and, and leaving a mash to sit with the lid on for an hour. And it's great for things like, for like kettle souring, overnight souring, uh, mash souring for burner vices or whatever. But it doesn't do a great job of making for an efficient um, mash or an efficient sparge. So one of the things that I've decided to do with my home system because it's driving me crazy is I'm going to build uh, I'm going to build a, a proper sparge arm into the lid um, that will allow me to use the pumps to simply recirculate that mash, clear it up, uh, and uh, simply drain from the hot liquor tank for sparging and pump it right into the kettle. So that's what we're up to today. I got some stuff. We're going to get in close so you can see it. We're going to make ourselves a sparge arm for the hot liquor, for the, uh, the cooler mash tun. So here's the final spar jar. Now, I did make a couple of mistakes. Uh, number one, soldering is harder than it looks, so be it. Uh, number two, if you don't have a vise, you need to come up with a way to hold things in place. Because as you can see, one side twisted on me. And in fact, what it was, was that far bar twisted right here while I was soldering. This one, perfectly squared up, straight, everything's cool. But that one twisted on me, and then I dropped it. Um, so basically, I'm going to end up having to live with it. I can't really, the pieces are too short to twist the copper or torque the copper into position or bend it. So, yeah, it's just going to be the way it is. Um, now, I mean, really, it doesn't make a big difference. It's an eighth of an inch, whatever, and it's a spar drum. It's, I'm not building plumbing here, but... So the idea being that now, bottom side um, has um, 28, 32, 36 holes that will sprinkle down onto the green. So I shouldn't get any tunneling at all. Um, and the way it sets, it mounts right through the center hole of the mash tun. And then this piece of uh, tubing, just licking the inside so I can get it to slide on a little easier. Um, it's just silicone tubing and really it's just, it'll, it's, it'll hold it as a cap. Um, it's exactly the same as the silicone tubing that will go onto it when it's in use. Um, so that'll hold it into the lid. So it sits right underneath the lid, um, hose will be on top, lid, pump, pump drives up to top of mash. And now 
this, you will see, fits no impairment to the lid function at all. And, um, and that way I can retain temperature um, for the last few minutes of the mash. So I can pull off of bottom, into pump, out of pump, into the lid or into the uh, spar jar. So the next benefit is, well, the next issue though, and I didn't come up with this until just now because I'm a dumbass, but if I'm using this for sparging, how can I tell when that's going to overflow? Because the lid has to be on for it to operate. So when I'm pulling water from the HLT into the pump and out into here, there's no way for me to know if I'm going to overflow up here if I get a stuck sparge or something. So now i got to come up with another solution. And I think my solution is going to be to run just a pair of brackets across the top of the, of the mash tun during sparge. Not during laudering, but during sparge. Um, and that way this will simply rest on a pair of bars and that way I can see exactly what's going on. I don't know. I'll figure that out. So that's where we're at. Sparge arm in a day.